Many people think of history the way it's presented in textbooks as major dates and major personalities, but the history of Carroll County is very different. It's the history of everyday life. It's ordinary people doing ordinary things. And so when you talk about the history, you're describing the thread of everyday living uh, in the patchwork of uh, Carroll County's history. And the settlement of this region was the true diversity melting pot. We had Pennsylvania Germans migrating into this area from the north. We had a mixture of uh, English, Irish, and Scottish residents coming in from Tidewater, Maryland around the Chesapeake. Uh, we also had African Americans who worked uh, both for the Pennsylvania Germans and the English. The Pennsylvania Germans came down with a variety of trades. They uh tended to create little independent farms settled around small town centers. Um, so usually you would start with a store or a tavern and then other businesses would grow up around it. The Tidewater English favored a large plantation lifestyle. 400, 500 acre farms were not uncommon for them. Very labor intensive. They were growing tobacco and those crops were then exported down to Annapolis and shipped out. And that economy used slavery and those uh, large farms were their idea not having a community center like you would have in the German populations. I have heard that slavery in this section of Maryland wasn't as profitable for the slave owners because of the short growing season. Uh, during the winter time there was nothing for the slave to do which meant the slave owners had to feed them year round but many of them were cabinet makers painters, carpenters. Owners took advantage of their slave skills to have them build whatever they needed, as well as to maintain their property. If a neighbor needed something built, the owner would hire his slaves out to complete the work. And sometimes uh, they were even kind enough to give the slaves some of the money that they made. And there were many slaves who were able to pay for their freedom from the money that they had earned. So as early as the first census in 1790, you had nearly equal slave and free black populations in what will become Carroll County. And those populations stayed nearly equal up until the Civil War. There was a settlement of Quakers that moved into Carroll County and they settled near Union Bridge in the middle of the, se of the uh, 18th century. Many of them arrived for the same reasons that the other groups did, looking for new economic opportunities. Quakers are, are not Germans. They're English-speaking people, and they, a lot of them coming down from Pennsylvania. The Quakers are a distinctly religious organization. The Quaker community was known as the Pipe Creek Settlement, with the Pipe Creek Meeting House as their place of worship. Carroll County also became known as the Cradle of Methodism. Robert Strawbridge came to this country in uh, around 1760, and he settled out in uh, Wakefield Valley. Robert and his wife Elizabeth came over from Drumsta Island. They brought the good news of Jesus Christ, and Robert wanted to start a new church and spread the gospel to all he met. Robert Strawbridge was an avid Methodist, and he had his own way of preaching. And uh, in fact, he was not an ordained minister but he was the first uh, person to preach Methodism and to convert people here in the United States. In 1764, he was instrumental in having a log structure built that he called the Log Meeting House. And people would come in and stay for hours and hours, sometimes all day, just to listen to Robert Strawbridge preach in the Log Meeting House. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the only begotten son, Robert Strawbridge was going around the country preaching all the time. His wife Elizabeth would uh, talk to the uh, people as they sat down to eat and express Methodist religion. And in the process, she converted a gentleman by the name of John Evans, who happened to be helping out on the farm several times. And John Evans, in turn, 
became an avid uh, Methodist, and he held uh, his class meetings in his house. He would invite slaves to attend the class meetings. One of his slaves that was allowed to attend was Jacob Toogood. He ended up being one of the first black Methodist preachers in America. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And there it was, the perishing return of life. The rolling hills, fertile valleys, and ample waterways became the foundation for the development of an agrarian society, one that was self-sustaining, where farmers produced crops for their families as well as for the community. During this time, there was a notable first for the area. In 1811, Jacob Thomas of Union Bridge invented the first reaping machine in the country. The machine was perfected and patented by his cousin Obed Hussey in 1839 one year prior to the McCormick Reaper. The uh, economy was built around uh, transportation uh, by horse and wagon. So communities developed around intersections of roads. Now in some places, people got permission from the state to build what they would call a turnpike. And if you built a turnpike, then you needed money to maintain it. So people quite often got permission to charge tolls on their roads. Each traveler was uh, charged on the toll road depending on what they were driving or carrying. If it was a single horse riding, then it was one, I think it was usually a penny. And then if it was a horse and wagon, it was maybe two cents. And then it went on up from there. If you drive a herd of cattle down there, you got charged by the head. One of the interesting ways to look at Carroll County's history is by comparing the development of towns. Actually, Tawnytown and Manchester probably were the two most prominent communities because both of them were at intersections of uh, major turnpikes, both of them uh, being early Indian trails that the early settlers adapted for turnpike transportation. Manchester was one of the uh, more prosperous communities in the county. It was initially laid out by an Englishman, Richard Richards, but predominantly settled by Pennsylvania Germans. Hampstead is similar to Manchester in that it was laid out by an Englishman, Christopher Vaughan. The settlement period is sort of, I like to call it kind of almost the Wild West, where you had a, a town founder. Pure development, there's no rules and regulations. A man would buy a piece of real estate and lay it out into lots, and then would sell those lots. Tawnytown, founded in 1754, is the oldest town in the county. Raphael Tawny laid out the lots and gave the new town his name. When he laid out the lots, um, they were half acre lots, and um, they varied in price. Um, the person who bought one had to erect a house that was 20 feet by 24 feet, and it had to have a stone or a brick chimney, and that had to be done within a year. Um, if they didn't do that, then they could be fined or they could lose their land. The taverns were on the four corners of the uh, town that was laid out, and uh, they were some of the earliest buildings that were erected. Westminster was laid out by a man named uh, William Winchester in 1764 who laid out 45 town lots on what he described as the main road to Baltimore. Usually you would start with a tavern and they're spaced about a day's journey apart because people would need a place to stay and in those days you could do 10 or 15 miles before you needed to stop for the night. Isaac Richardson Attlee purchased property at a crossroads area that would become the town of New Windsor. It was the Monocacy Road and the Buffalo Road, and he could see the traffic that was coming up and down those roads, and he figured this is a good place to set up a stagecoach type stop where he could uh, serve food and drink and board people for the night. And after he started investigating his property, he found that there were springs down here at the bottom of uh, what was then Bath Street. Now it's called Main Street. And he started having tourists come to partake of the sulfur waters that were in those springs. 
the town has always been named New Windsor. Now, it got known as Sulphur Springs because of the springs. And also, sometimes they would call it Springtown. But uh, the name is officially New Windsor. As the towns developed in, uh, in Carroll County, they became uh, transportation centers, sort of the hubs for transporting uh, agricultural goods to market. Primarily, uh, routes down to the Port of Baltimore uh, to serve an urban population and for shipping to other locations, but also uh, north into Pennsylvania or west or south into uh, other locations. As the area's agrarian economy became strong enough, a shift from the early subsistence farming made way for a surplus in agricultural products. Tradesmen like tanners, blacksmiths, and wagon makers were in demand, and the milling operations began to expand. It was important to have mills back in the 18th century uh, for the development of the communities. People needed to have a place to take their grain and their lumber to have it ground into flour and to have the logs made into boards for their building purposes. Andrew and David Shriver chose this particular area because of the very strong water flow of the Big Pipe Creek and the deep run. And they needed that strong flow of water to operate their mills. And as soon as the mill was constructed, they added a small home, and it was to be a double home for both Andrew's family and David Shriver. Well, Union Mills' name came from the partnership of the two brothers, David and Andrew. Uh, when they selected uh, the site here in Union Mills to uh, build the mill and start their many businesses, they recognized they had an excellent uh, crossroads settlement because the roads led on to uh, Western Maryland, Hampstead, Manchester, and also Hanover, Pennsylvania. We ended up having a, uh, a little inn. There were political speeches that were made here. The community could get their information here. There was a little general store. The post office was here. This was a, a very bustling community. The homestead is an example of an early uh, American industrial park, self-contained with the tannery, the mill, the blacksmith uh, shop, the cooper shop, and later the, uh, the cannery. Uh, so they had everything they needed to uh, uh, support a small business operation. <music> 